Hello, hello, internet Steam and indie game stand. Uh, yeah, indie game stand. So let's. I've got a little, a little news, and then I want to show off some updates. And then I thought I would show you the code behind some of the stuff going on. Uh, if you're not super interested in seeing that, then maybe this isn't the video for you. Uh, but I thought I'd show people how I'm coding this stuff um, and, and get into some of the crazy, crazy details. Uh, but first, a little announcement: Indie Game Stand uh, approved Mysterious Space uh, to be on sale there. I had never honestly heard of game, Indie Game Stand until I went searching for places where people might post indie games. So I feel kind of bad because I'm like, are they even? Do people know about them? Are they good? I don't, I really don't know. Uh, but they sell indie games. And they are happy to, they provide like a field to link back to a, a Steam Greenlight. So they seem to be totally friendly about the fact that maybe you'll be selling elsewhere as well, like Steam, which is a little surprising to me. Uh, so they seem really cool. Uh, and I do not have the game available there yet. This weekend is about to get busy, but I will post there uh, a download of the full game for $2.50. I was saying two or three. I figure let's go in the middle. I was kind of waiting to see. I've heard that Steam, like how much they decide to take, you know, what cut they decide to take, they don't like to talk about it publicly and all this stuff. So I was waiting to see how much they take before deciding. But again, money is not like the, the big thing for me here. It's, it's more about making a cool game. Uh, and also along those lines, I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to say it again. Any money made from the game, I'm happy to put back into the game um, via, you know, paying artists or, or musicians, which are also artists. Uh, to make content for the game, uh, you know, we could we could throw it to some charities, uh, and you know, I'll probably use a little for myself too. I'll, I'll buy some people some dinner and be like, yeah, I made Mysterious Space. It was great. Uh, but I, I really want to throw the vast majority of it right back into Mysterious Space. Anyway, let, so let, again, I'll announce when it's actually up on Indie Game Stand. It's not going to be till next week. Uh, I'd also like to take the chance to to finish up 0.5.1. So let me show you what I'm working on so far. Uh, I'm just going to use the keyboard. Um, Blah, 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 blah. Don't, don't care. All right, so the game is in a bad state right now, and you'll see what I mean. You see those crazy little little speed lines pushing? Oh my god, they're pushing up all those power-ups, too. Give me that power-up. They push bullets. So what I'm working on here, inspired by a few suggestions, and under the water we have bubbles. It's hard to see because this water is very white. Um, is having pushing effects that can exist on levels. Obviously, having the entire level push like this is not something that I would really do. I just wanted to be able to test. What I'm going to do in the future is that there might be these vents in, you know, a few locations in, in lava levels. Although well, these don't get pushed, though. Oh, there's some funny things going on. We'll talk about that in the code in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll put vents in places around the lava levels so you get pushed around, or water, and vents can be different strengths. And under liquids, they create all these bubbles, and above, they create all these lines. And I think it might be hard to see because the colors are so light, but I, you can probably see that little speed lines are like gathering on the top here, which is really bad. I need to fix that. So anyway, it's all very much work in progress, but also all very much working. And let's see if I can get an explosion in here. I don't know if you noticed, but everything gets pushed, which is how it should be. Um, the smoke from an explosion when you blow up a dude gets pushed by the pushing effect. Um, and the pushing effects can be in any direction. It could be left or right. I just happen to right now be testing straight up. And actually, I have not tested uh, up and down. Um, let me show you one more thing. Let me activate the Konami code. Konami code is, so we had thrusters one, and okay, increases control by improving stopping speed, cost a point. And thrusters two used to only be allows you to change your orientation while firing, and I mentioned in a previous update that I thought that was maybe kind of weak, given that it cost, you know, you have to get thrusters one, then you can get this thrusters two, and all it's really doing you is giving you some convenience. Um, I think it's useful convenience, and I think if you're good with the controller, that it can make a, an important difference, because um, it gives you a little more speed, and a little more speed can make a lot of difference. Uh, but I, I still didn't feel like it was really enough. Uh, and, and now that we have these pushing effects, I thought, hey, that because I was thinking thrusters 2 maybe would make you go a little faster. But why not let's resist pushing forces uh, with thrusters 2, because it's a stabilizing some, I don't know, you, you don't, don't worry about it, it's the future. Um, but let me show you some crazy codes. I've made the window nice and small here so that uh, we can, there's hopefully nothing you cannot see. Let me just side, you know, it doesn't have to be pixel perfect. All right. Um, oh, and I didn't show you the collection menu. 
it's okay. What we're here to do today is, is some crazy code. So I'm just going to talk about how some of the things are structured, all the things on the level. Uh, and they're, in fact, called things. So I don't really you know, I'm not entirely sure what your guys' interest is. So, so afterwards, please let me know what parts of this were interesting and what parts weren't. I don't know how many people are interested in the code, what aspects of the code you are interested in, and, and what about the code you would like me to talk about. Maybe those two things seem related, but um, I mean, you know, are, are you interested in, in, in how the code works or, or in maybe higher level things? I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd give this a try. And, you know, if no one is interested, then, then I, won't, I won't do this in the future. Anyway, everything in the game that moves around on levels, terrain is separate, is derived from this thing class. I probably would have called it object, but object is always a reserved word in, in programming languages, so you can't do it. And you can see it has all sorts of things. Um, if you are super familiar with C-sharp, and if you're not, I need to talk about this anyway. So C-sharp offers a weird thing that I had never encountered in a programming language before. It, it has this uh, super succinct way to define a getter and a setter uh, for member variables. So this is a variable called in liquid, but it is also we can define methods for it right here. Like if we wanted, we could we could return something different. One, you know, it won't let me return the value one, obviously, because that's not of type liquid. Yeah, it's getting angry. Um, but it's really weird. I had not encountered this before, and then I learned about it in C sharp and went, oh, that's useful. I have not been coding with those in mind. So my code is in kind of a weird place right now where I have um, multiple. Like sometimes I have a variable like within height that I then have a getter, like a, a classic getter and setter, uh, like width, probably, if we can find it. I don't know. Anyway, I promise it's in here. And and sometimes I so sometimes I do it the old school way and sometimes I do it the new way. So the code is a little bit messy, so I apologize about that. Uh, that is my newness with with uh, those getters and setters. Because I came from I, I used to code a lot in Java. Anyway, we're getting off topic. So we have all these wonderful things, velocity. Right, so in liquid tells you if the object is currently in a liquid and what kind of liquid it is. There's there's many kinds of liquids. Um, we have lava, water, and what I'm calling slime. That's the stuff you find on mining planets. It makes you go very slow. You can see the liquids has a, have a slowing effect. So I've really gone absolutely crazy nuts with the object oriented. Um, in order so, so that when an object knows, okay, no liquid is, I'm in, how does that affect me? Well, I want to get the slowing amount of this liquid. OK, that's in a, that's in a little function uh, that's returned. Um, and I try to put more fixed values like this in functions rather than methods. And I'll show you why in a moment. So let's get to something. I didn't mean to get distracted with liquids. And I worry I'm jumping around so much in the code that you're just like, what is he doing? What is he talking about? So let us instead find the part that moves you around because of events. So a piece of terrain, a tile. It can be sloped, and I'm handling this in a, in a very uh, naive way. But they can have a, a venting value. I didn't know what to call it. Wind, pushing force, I don't know. I'm, I'm calling vents because I was imagining vents of lava or, or, or hot water or whatever. Um, so it's just an x and y value for how it pushes you, and, and you, you could have some combination. Um, for now, I don't have the graphics for drawing diagonal lines. I'm just drawing simple rectangles. Uh, so, you know, there's got to be horizontal or vertical, but in the future, I'll, I'll definitely look into doing diagonals. But anyway, things get pushed around um, every, every step. We have this update method that almost everything in the game has. I, I make sure to implement that everywhere, and that is, you know, we, we update everything and then we draw. We update everything and we draw. Um, and actually, maybe you update and then you update again because your computer is slow and can't draw graphics. I can't imagine that happening. And actually, um, it is surprising. Did you see all those little lines and bubbles? Keep in mind that those are all little physics objects. They're all things with update methods, and there was like hundreds of them on the screen. And the game doesn't doesn't slow down. Um, I'm I'm asking very little of computers to run this. Someone asked was asking me earlier, uh, you know, what are the system requirements for this game? I don't exactly know. They seem to be quite low. So we can have hundreds of these little little objects doing little physics. And the physics isn't that complicated. I almost don't want to say physics, because that seems to imply we don't even have gravity, for example. There's not even gravity in this game. Um, so anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. So yeah, everything has this little update. And, and you can see it's virtual. Virtual means that, that a class that, you know, something that inherits from thing might, might overwrite update to do something different. Or more often, um, it just does something extra and then calls the, the parent update. So again, going going absolutely nuts. So let's look at an example for that. So we can see this venting thing, which applies again to all things. So bubbles that you saw are things. The little smoke clouds when you blow thing when you blow up enemies are things. 
Uh, all the enemies are things, all the bullets are things, so they all get pushed around. And that is also part of why we have this vent multiplier, because some things might want to be more or less affected by vents. So, for example, let's, let's, well, okay, let's find the definition of vent multiplier. Mostly it's one. So again, this is a case you might be like, well, why not just store that in a, in a, in a, you know, a float, uh, just a, just a variable rather than a, a function or a method. Why, why store it there? Um, but let's look at bullets real quick. So I can, I can show you the bullets. Those would be in things. And I keep a directory structure to mark the inheritance. I'm actually really happy. I know that some people want to have multiple inheritance. So one, one class can inherit from multiple parents. Not only does that make code ugly and you get into weird cases, then I can't have this nice tree structure, which I find very useful. So let's find the bullet class, which there are multiple kinds of bullets, as we can see, fragmenting, knockback, rubberized, all these things. Um, but here's the bullet class, and it has its own vent multiplier, 0.25, so it's only respecting a push uh, from the terrain at a quarter strength, so they don't get pushed around as much as other things. Um, and I just felt that it was weird that they were getting pushed around as much as ships, because they're going really fast. I guess I mean, the fact that they move quickly through the vents means they don't get pushed as much through it, but I, I just wanted it more. You know, there's no real physics behind this. Maybe you could call this, they're more aerodynamic or something. Think of it however you want. Again, the physics are not very realistic here. They're for making the game fun. Um, realism is less important than fun. This is always true. Um, velocity drag rate is a similar sort of thing. This uh, controls uh, the percent of your velocity you, you would lose, it multiplies your velocity by this number every step. So you would, you're losing velocity uh, due to air resistance, apparently, although it affects you in space. Again, let's not worry about the reality. Um, you know, if we wanted to realistically simulate the physics, then when you, were in a spa when you were out in space, you would just keep going after you thrusted. You would never slow down, and, and you could achieve extreme velocities by continuing to accelerate. Uh, but we don't do that, because we just want things to move at kind of a fixed rate. Bullets, they never slow down. Um, they never attempt to thrust themselves, so that's okay. If we wanted to look at, say, a creature, which has a velocity thing. What was that velocity thing called? I've already forgotten because I can't remember things. Velocity drag rate for a creature. Whoops. No, not here. So creatures must have the same. That's kind of a problem, but players will have different. Um, it's not a problem. Actually, so I'm sorry, the reason why Velocity drag rate for bullets is one that's not the default for all things. That's my problem. I don't know what I'm saying. Apparently I somehow, oh yeah, I was changing that. The default is 85%, so every step you lose 15% of your, of your velocity, whatever that is. Um, all objects do that, but bullet, again, is overriding that. Um, and you can see override, it's not even doing anything with the base, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at players, because players do even more different things, and, and, and this is where we get into why we would have these as methods rather than variables. So let's go into the player class, and let's find his velocity drag, drag rate. So if you have at least one thruster upgrade, and you're not currently thrusting, then we give you a smaller velocity drag rate. It's kind of, it's a weird, because this is a kind of a backwards variable, right? The smaller it is, the faster you slow down, or, or the more quickly you slow down. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird in that regard, but this is making you slow down faster because you're multiplying your velocity by a smaller fraction every step. And, and again, so this is the, the first thruster upgrade is the one that says you come to a complete stop m more quickly when you're not accelerating. And so that's what this is about. If you're currently not thrusting, and you have this upgrade, then your drag rate is higher, or it's, it's lower, so it's higher. Again, I'm, I'm sorry if the numbers don't make a whole lot of sense here. It's better than Thacko, if you remember old school Dungeons and Dragons. Let's not even talk about it. Vent multiplier, we have a similar thing going on. Um, and this makes more, this is more intuitive how the numbers work. A smaller vent multiplier means the vents affect you less. And, and so that's what's going on here. Once you have the second upgrade, thruster upgrade or higher, then, then you get the, the lower. And, and again, we're using the crazy inheritance. What's the base vent multiplier? I don't know. I don't care. Apparently it's one. But if I wanted to change it in the future, if I decided I just wanted to universally make all things more affected by vents, I could tweak this number, and, and then it would cascade through, and this would be 2 thirds, whatever that value was, and I don't have to worry about what the original value was. So, and, and it is, I'm not as good about doing this in all places as I should be. Um, and you know, part of that is I make, I make things a little better. There's definitely some updates. I, if you, you'll probably see them in the change log. I'll be like, oh, I refactored a bunch of this stuff or whatever. And 
if you're not super familiar with, I don't think I was familiar with the word refactor until my full-time job uh, programming. I don't know what I would have called it. I'm just rearranging my code, but I mean that's what it is. You're rearranging, you're changing names, you're you're making more things use the fancy getters and setters than you know were before, or whatever. Um, See, these are the old school. So I started to add the new, the getters for these variables, and really that should just help. You know, this is another thing I would refactor later, but I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so that is some of the crazy level of of object orientedness that I that I have in the game, and that I that I wanted to talk about because I find that it's very useful. Because again, it was really easy for me to add these pushing forces. I forgot about the fact that the explosions that you see are implemented as things. And so when I implemented all the, the, the thrust on tiles, you know, where a terrain tile can just push things, um, all of a sudden all my power-ups was floating to the top of the screen, including fuel. And I was like, oh god, everything is a thing, and I forget about that. And it's really handy. I mean, that gives me a lot of power. It's easy to implement a feature like this because of that. Um, and bubbles as well. So the great thing about bubbles, here's a bubble. Actually, let's find a speed line. The speed lines don't move themselves in any way. They have a little update method. Um, you know, we could go to the base update and see that they're checking liquids and vents and things. But again, the base includes, and sorry, I just pressed a button and there's no way you could have followed that. So if you press, I forget what it is by default, but I change it to be control B because that's what it is in PHP Storm. And I do a lot of PHP stuff for work. So anyway, you can just go to the definition. I should right click and not use my things, then you would know. Go to definition. I'm sorry, I've probably done that before, and you guys are like, how did he do that? So here's, here's the base for speed line update. Um, and we can see it gets pushed around by vents. So the speed lines just get pushed anyway by vents. And if I wanted them to get pushed faster to kind of try to convey, yeah, it's fast, you're going to get pushed here, I could increase the vent multiplier to two to make them you know move even faster. You would up, up uh, what was that, vent multiplier? Yeah. There. No, we want two. Or the good way to do it would be like that, right? So, and let's go check this out. <laughs> and, and now we're going to see those speed lines move super quick, and they're going to pile up on the top of the levels to an even greater degree, and we will be a little sad. It's, it's per pixel perfect enough. Um, I think we can probably just load an old game. Hard to say. You know what would be good to compare it to? Bubbles. Let's, um... Did this one have bubbles? Yeah. The lines seem to be moving faster than bubbles. Yeah, I think so. And you know, it is it is hard to tell. Maybe if I was... You know what, let's do something absurd. Let's do it like times 20. Then we'll see. We probably won't even see the, the lines as much. And actually, so the problem I'm running into, the reason... So this is good because it was really easy to implement. You know, as I said, wow, even the bullets and everything are getting pushed around just like you would want. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, now look at those lines just like freaking out because they're going so fast. Um, so good. It's just as I said. Um, uh, let's quit. The, uh, the problem is, is those lines are getting, when they're not moving 20 times faster, when they're not getting accelerated so much, they're collecting up at the top of the, of the vent tiles where there's no more venting force because they just kind of get pushed up. And you can see I have some little code in here that makes them lose life. And uh, as they lose life, they get smaller. And then when they're so small, they just get removed entirely. So the lines start at random widths or heights. They get smaller over time in whatever, you know, if they're vertical or not, uh, until they go away completely and then they're removed from the level. Uh, but so that means they can live longer than they're thrusted. Like if a, if a thrusting tile with, uh, you know, let's just go look in the game and, and we'll go find it again. Or maybe you can already imagine what I'm saying, showing you is, hey, whatever. We're already here. We can't go back. We're all in. All right, so. <laughs> so the tile just below me is pushing me, but then you don't get pushed anymore. And so the little speed lines are similarly not getting pushed. You might wonder, though, well, hey, look at those bubbles. And again, it's hard to see the bubbles because this is a very light-colored water. Um, but the bubbles go away when they leave water, and that is part of the bubble code. The bubble code just says, when I'm not in uh, water anymore, if my liquid is null or my life is zero, then I go away. So, right, and they actually get smaller first, so they go through the normal steps of getting smaller. So, they, so when they hit the surface of the water, they very quickly become small and then vanish. Technically, you could call that a bug. They should probably vanish immediately. 
uh, it's going to happen in like three frames max, so I'm not too worried about it. You're, you're not going to really see it. I, I should probably clean it up at some point. You know what? Here, look. Or in liquid equals null. There. Now, now it's done. Um, so I could do something similar for the speed lines. I just need to have something where it's like, okay, or the terrain that you're in. Yeah, I don't know exactly where that is. Um, I don't think actually things know what terrain they're in necessarily. That seems like a failing. No, it must because it knows whether or not it's in a liquid. Yeah, anyway, I'll figure it out. So I just need to make it so that if the speed lines aren't on a pushing thing, then they should just disappear in the same way that bubbles disappear when they're not in liquid. Um, also, a really cool thing, so let's look at the bubbles again. The bubbles push themselves up all the time. They're always pushing their velocity. And again, their velocity is, they're, they're always being dragged. They have that same velocity drag as anything else because they are a thing of 85%, uh, so they're losing 15% of their velocity. But they're always uh, going up. And I actually made it, so their sprite index tells you how big they are. There's a, a sprite sheet that's just bubbles, and it starts from small and gets bigger. So the bigger bubbles, in this case, are moving faster, uh, which is what this sneaky math is doing. Um, because they're bigger. I actually don't know if that's how bubbles work. I think it should be. I don't know. Anyway, bigger bubbles move faster. Now I really want to look at just like a can of soda or a bottle of soda and see if that, but it should, right? Because they're bigger. They've got, it's a, it's a larger area with a smaller mass. I don't know. Anyway, um, they, they, are, they are buoyant, basically. Um, they're not checking if they're in liquids before doing this, but that's because if they weren't in liquids, you know, worse things were happening. And actually, this is a little awkward, right? What we should actually probably do is put that there. Anyway, so uh, buoyant, the, the fact that I can have things buoyant, I would really like to have a, an enemy that floats on top of water, like a boat. And I could make the boat buoyant in the same way, where it's always being pulled down, uh, but when they're in water, they get pulled up. And, and again, there is no gravity currently in the game, and I think I'm not super interested in gravity, so I'll probably just ignore it. Maybe at some point I'll give all creatures, have them pulled by gravity to the planet's surface. Um, but wouldn't that be annoying for you if you were always having to push up because the planet was always pulling you down? All right, again, no fun, so we don't, we say never mind to realism in that case. Uh, but I would like an enemy that is always being pulled down, but then when he's in water, is pushed up so that he stays on top of the water. And that way, if you have a knockback bullet that like pushes him up because it's a forward direction or something, and so you push the guy up out of the water, he would fall back down onto the surface of the water. Or if you have a thing that pushes him down into the water, he would buoyantly return to the surface. That would be so cool. Like, it would look really neat to have that sort of motion. You're like, wow, it's like he's really on the water, because he is. As much as you want to say things happening in a computer are like water at all. Uh, so anyway, again, here's the crazy. So I think I should stop here. I mean, I'm sure there are other things I could show you in the code. Um, but again, I don't know how interested people are in looking at the code and seeing how all this stuff is done. So if you would like to see more things like this, let me know. Um, if you have specific ideas of things you want to see in the code, like, oh, I wish I, how did you do water at all? You know, why does, or what's the, what are these liquids you, you briefly touched on? Or, or whatever, if you want to know about any of this, um, uh, let me know. Let me know what you would like to see, uh, and I would be happy to show you guys little bits and pieces of the code. Um, because again, I, I think I mentioned this on the Steam forums somewhere, but uh, you, I received a lot of help, you know, online, looking at, at tutorials and, and, and ideas that people have had and looking at other people's code, uh, and it's really, really helpful. And I, don't, and I don't feel comfortable releasing this code open source, uh, but if I can be helpful to other people wanting to make games or, or, or who are just curious by showing little bits of the code, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I would like to, to give something back in that regard. So, so. Thank you for watching. Again, uh, I hope to have a, a game that you can buy and play the full thing on Indie Game Stand sometime, ne sometime next week. I will continue to be pushing for Steam. Uh, don't tell Indie Game Stand, but that's my ultimate goal, <laughs> would be to be on Steam. I, I'm not, I, I know less about Indie Game Stand, so I care less about them. That's probably a fallacy, a logical fallacy, but psychology, and we talked about that last, last update. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, and I'll let you know when all those things happen. Thank you for watching again. I am done, so goodbye. <laughs>